Hi, pet lovers. Thank you for joining Gina's Grooming Channel. Today, I'm standing outside of my salon, so in front of the salon, because I am packing up my salon to go make some house calls for some very special babies. So some of my pups that I've been working on for a long time, sometimes they age out or sometimes they get a disease or something happens where they can't come and see me anymore in my salon. So I pack up everything and I go see them. So today, guys, I'm going to show you my setup of what I do when I go into someone else's home. So a client's home, and I'm going to go over it on a high level with you. Um, but if you do need painful details, uh, I will put them down in the link in the description below, give you a link to our website so you can see every single piece of equipment that I take when I go do my house calls. So before we go into the equipment, let me talk about where I sometimes groom dogs when I visit them at their homes. The reason that I'm outside is, first off, it's a beautiful day, and when it is a beautiful day, I usually will choose to groom the dogs outside. Obviously, all the bath stuff has to be done where there is plumbing, so that usually takes place inside, and I'll share some secrets about that. And in addition, sometimes if the weather does not permit, or if there is no area outside to groom the dogs, I will groom sometimes in a kitchen, sometimes in a large bathroom, sometimes in a utility room. So whatever the client has available, we make it work, we get creative, but with all the equipment that I bring, I'm able to be creative and work with whatever situation I have in front of me. And I also want to mention for timing, this all takes me about 15, 20 minutes to set up at a client's site. It also takes me about 15, 20 minutes to pack it all into my car. So it is a more expensive service. I also have to drive over there. So just kind of a hint of how I handle this is I only go out a few times a month. But what I do is I group my clients so that it's a little more cost affordable for them and a little more cost affordable for me. I don't have to spend so much gas and I can give them a little bit of a discount. All right, guys, let's look at our big equipment. And then I'm going to go into the more detailed equipment. Again, remembering that I'm going to put in the description down below a link to our website where I'm going to give you the total list of what I carry when I'm, how I pack my car when I go see a dog at home. Okay, so high level overview, we've got our big equipment, a grooming table. Now I have a hydraulic table in my salon. I cannot carry that in the car that is really big and bulky. So what I've got is a static table. I've got two actually. You can see I have one for a little bit bigger dogs or if I'm gonna be at a location with multiple dogs, I do have that happening where I have one or two dogs that have become a little elderly, but the owner has other dogs that are not elderly. So sometimes I'll bring my big table just so I know that I'm gonna be working on a lot of dogs in one house, makes it a little more comfortable. But if I am gonna go see just one little dog um, in a house, makes it a little easier for me to carry my smaller table. Uh, so just be aware that I do have two. I also want to mention that the smaller table comes in really handy if I'm working in a situation where I don't have, uh, and I'll mention this, some patio furniture or some furniture that I can put my equipment upon while I'm working on the dogs. So I will always keep my small table in my car along with my big table just in case I need another piece of furniture to prop up some of my equipment. Okay, so of course, with our grooming table, we have our grooming arm. Um, I bought one that's really great and foldable. You can see kind of removes, but um, it, this is not really for big dogs. I'll link that one below, but there are some that you can buy for bigger dogs. Um, I will mention that it is a little difficult to do in-house grooms for large dogs. This is typically, typically for small dogs, but I have gone as large as a standard poodle, so it's not that bad. So this arm is compact. I'll show you how I fold it up and how I store it and how I transport it. I've also got an articulating arm and this arm is going to allow me to use my dryer, right, as a hose and a stand dryer. So I can remove the hose portion, right, put on whatever attachments I need to work on a dog. But when I'm ready to do my brush work and I need my hands free, I've got this articulating guy that allows me to really put the airflow wherever I need it to be. And it's much easier to transport than a bigger dryer that has like a stand arm. Uh, so this really allows me to carry least amount of stuff, but have the most amount of impact. So now that we see how the table is set up, like I mentioned, this is not hydraulic. So what I have um, is I carry a chair so that I can move up and down, that I'm not leaning down so much when I'm doing nails. And if I can sit down, I will sit down and make this kind of a hydraulic table without the hydraulics because I will tell you that when you're making house calls, it does affect your back. You're not only carrying large equipment in and out of houses, right, and packing up, you're also bending your back a lot. So I really, really, really recommend a stool. Um, I found this guy and this is awesome. 
because this is how it packs up. It's just a few pounds light. Uh, you can actually just put it in your purse or a bag. Um, and this guy, right, now becomes a stool. So when I'm working on an animal and I need to go into a little more focus, instead of pumping up the table or pumping down the table, I actually put myself up or down with the stool. Now underneath the table, I'm going to pick this up, is I have opted for a trash can that is wicker and flexible. The reason why is that even though I use this as a trash can while I'm grooming the dogs, right? I just bring a little trash bag. This also serves as an extra storage when I'm carrying things in and out of a client's house. So I will put uh, my scissor pack in here. I'll put other things in here. I'll put my apron. Sometimes, you know, if I need my back brace, I'll put it in here and then I can carry it with these little loops very easy to handle. Um, so just giving you an idea that instead of just bringing a trash can, I'm also bringing a tote, okay, that serves as a trash can when I'm working on the pets. Okay, I carry my scissors and my scissor pack in a holster. Uh, I got used to this when I was teaching um, at an academy for animal arts. I got really used to having a holster, but I also love it now because I use it even in my salon or when I'm away and doing house calls because all of my scissors are organized in the same exact place. I know that sounds a little OCD, but when you're working fast on an animal, even if you're not OCD, you want to make sure that all of your stuff is in the right place and in the same place every single time. Those seconds uh, can really cost a lot of safety. So um, I use a scissors pack and a holster, not only to organize my stuff, but I also can, it's very fast when I'm ready to take it. I see where everything is, I know where everything is supposed to be, and so when I'm packing, this makes it a lot easier for me. In addition to my holster with my scissor pack, is what I kind of call it, um, I'm also going to show you that I do an electronics case. So uh, cases come in all shapes and sizes. I've had this guy forever, but the way that it pans out, this is where I can hold all of my clippers. Okay, this is also where I hold all of my clipper guide combs or guard combs. This is also where I put some extra stuff like my nail grinder. Um, I've got some extra combs depending on the jobs that I'm going to do. So depending on the dogs that I'm going to see, I'm going to change out which combs I'm bringing to those appointments. So if I am doing a short coated dog like a chihuahua or something, I'm going to be carrying my rubber brush. But if I'm doing a longer coated dog, um, some a Sometimes a dog that can get matted or that has undercoat. Um, I may take an undercoat rake um, or a dematting rake. If I have an older dog, I'm going to make sure to bring a pin brush that has coated pins. So depending on the clients that you are going to see, uh, you're going to bring the appropriate uh, brushes. But um, just to show you that I use this case to kind of carry all that important stuff. And a note about the electronics case, and I learned this the hard way. So one day I was driving and this guy was in the back of the trunk. And when I got home, I realized that this, because this is really easy to turn on just with a little bit of pressure, was on. So thank goodness I didn't burn out my motor. Not sure where in the ride that happened, but just want you to be aware that with the electronics, I keep it close by. So if I have to pull over and see what's going on in the case, I can do that and I can hear what's going on. And just to let you guys know regarding which clippers I choose, that's also dependent on the dogs that I'm seeing. So um, if I am doing a lot of small dogs with light coats, um, I will be bringing my A5. That's my heavy duty clipper, but my cordless one works fine. It's a little easier than having to carry a cord. But for some dogs that are a little more intense, so if I am working on a standard poodle, I will bring my corded uh, clipper just so that I have a little more of that power. And then I usually will always carry my detail clipper. This is, of course, my five in one wall with a five in one variable blade. This one, of course, has guide combs that sit on it. Um, and this is really great, especially again, working with small dogs and doing that detail work also for sanitaries, paw pads, things like that. So now that we know what's in the case, let's talk about our bottle case. So I bring a bag um, and this bag is kind of like a wet, dry um, bottle case. And I will tell you guys all the inventory that I do in there. Um, but just to show you, this is where I carry my mixing bottles. This is where I'm going to have my shampoo that I'm going to be mixing. This is where I have my toothpaste. This is where I have my ear cleaner and my ear powder. You're getting the point, right? Uh, my spray. So anyway, everything that you need for the bath and for any sprays, colognes. Um, this is where I carry my flea combs for the bath. Um, this is all there. My face wash, blah, blah, blah. Of course, I'm looking at the bottom. Never forget your styptic powder. Um, very important. 
anyway, guys, you get the point. So everything that I need, all the product that I need um, to get the job done, I put it into one bag um, and that's how I keep track of it. And so when I come to the client's house, I kind of lay out what I need to have by the bath. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then I lay out everything that I need to have by the table, such as ear powder, ear cleaner, things like that when I'm actually doing the grooming procedure. So, okay, guys, let's talk about the bath. Uh, this is where we have plumbing and we were relying on what the client has in their home. Now, every client is not set up to give dogs a bath comfortably. Now, of course, you do have some utility uh, areas that have a sprayer and that I can absolutely use, but I have found probably 50-50 that you've got to be prepared with your own uh, hose attachments for a tub or for a sink. Fortunately, these guys are not too expensive um, and they do work with most standard faucets. So I've used this on faucets that are in the sink and I've used this in faucets that are in uh, a tub. But if you want to ask why I have two of these guys is some tubs, right? Don't have a standard attachment. They have a bigger attachment. So I had to buy one, kind of cut some grooves in this. So this guy is for my non-standard tub attachments. This one is for my standard tub attachments. I carry both of them just in case so that I'm prepared for any situation. Now guys, just a note about these uh, tub attachments is sometimes you don't get a good seal, so be prepared for that. Um, there is a tightening nut here, but sometimes it just doesn't seat right. So sometimes just be prepared with a rag or a towel that when you put this on, you're gonna have to surround that seal. Sometimes I have to tie it off, right, with um, a lead and that way so that water isn't spraying everywhere. So yes, these guys work really, really great, but they're not 100% because there's so many different faucets and different sizes. So just be prepared and I'll make sure that I put that on the list um, with some things that you can use to tighten that seal. And guys, last but not least, I have to bring in my own cleaning supplies because I want to leave the client's home exactly like I found it. Uh, so out of respect to them, I make sure that I bring cleaning products. I make sure I vacuum everything up. I make sure that I sweep everything up. I have a little dustpan and I also have um, a broom that I can make this smaller or larger so that when I transport it, it's a little easier to carry, making it smaller. When I get to a client's house, I now have a full-size broom. Well, all right, that is the high level inventory. Now what I'm gonna do is pack everything up and show you how I do that and how it fits into my car. Right, guys, now that I have everything packed up, I need to put it in my car. I'm going to show you how you do this and fit all this into a four door sedan. All right, folks, well, there you have it a full professional salon in the trunk of a four door sedan. And guys, remember when I'm actually traveling with this equipment, I'm going to take my electronics case and keep it in the passenger seat so that I can hear anything that might be going on. Guys, thank you so much for letting me take you on this journey. It's a very special journey that I do a few times a month to visit some very special babies in my life. Guys, if this is content that you like, thank you so much for clicking that thumbs up. Thank you for subscribing if you haven't done so already. And thank you so much for your time. Happy grooming. We'll see you soon.